Hello, and welcome to Chill Aquarium, an idle aquarium game where the goal is to buy fish, grow them into adults, and sell them to try to make as much money as you possibly can. Today, I want to go over a few tips and tricks that I kind of wish I knew when I had started to make my progress go a little bit faster and make it a little more streamlined. Let's go ahead and go over those. So my first tip for you actually today is play the game however you want. The beauty of this game is there is no correct way to play it since it is considered an idle game and you could literally let it sit there as a desktop screensaver if you wanted to. You do have the option to of course feed the fish which will give them XP if they're babies to help them grow into adults faster. But luckily, you don't even need to do this. You can literally just leave it there, watch them swim around your screen, and you don't have to interact with it whatsoever if you so choose not to do so. So for our next set of tips, I'm gonna go ahead and reset my data. Don't worry, I've completely backed up all of my save files, so I'm not gonna lose anything. It's just going to be easier to visualize and go along with what I would do when I'm first starting in this game all the way up to where I am now. I might not go as far as that, but I will at least go ahead and reset my data so we're with a completely fresh queen slate and we can go ahead and just start fresh and go from the very beginning up until at least you get into what I would consider the second tier of fish because you can basically take that information and use it to go through all the way to the end game, all the way to the highest tier of fish and making income. Alright, so here we are, we've got a completely fresh slate. This is what your game will look like when you very first open it. The only difference is when you, the first time you open the game, you're going to get a tutorial that the developer thankfully put in to kind of teach you how the game works. But basically at the very start, you're not going to have any fish. You're just going to have one single fish tank and you're going to start with $25. So what we're going to do with our $25 and the tutorial should teach you this is we're going to come up to the shop button and we're going to buy our five freshwater friends packs. We're going to go ahead and open them. It's going to give you a bunch of fish. You're basically going to move your mouse over them left and right, unlock all the fish. And now we have all the fish swimming around in the tank. So for tip number two, what I want to go ahead and go over is the experience rates and kind of how the growth of the fish in this game works. So each fish, based on its tier, has a XP amount, an XP cap if you will, that determines how much experience it needs to become an adult fish. This fish in particular requires 7200 experience which is about how much you need for most of the common fish. It depends on the rarity of the fish. There are four rarities of fish. There are common, rare, epic, and legendary. Common is, of course, the most common. Next is rare. After that is epic. And then there is legendary. As you go on, the higher the rarity of fish, of course, the more experience it's going to need to level up into adulthood. Now, as one real life second passes in the real world, every single fish gains one experience point per that second, all at the same time. So tip number three, we kind of want to speed this experience progress up. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our mouse and we're going to hold right click and we're going to feed our fish. This will help them grow a lot faster. Every time they eat one of these food pellets, it gives them five experience. We already had a fish grow into adulthood. That is fantastic. Now, one really nice thing about this game is we don't necessarily have to sit here and hold the right click button to feed the fish. We can make it completely AFK. So we're going to go over how to do that really quick. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to try to gather all the fish. If you can't gather all of them, it's fine. Try to get as many as you can bundled up. We're just going to leave them over here. Take them, take them, take them. Have them follow our mouse. We're going to bring them down here into the corner. And then we're going to look for this giant brown circle here. We're going to line our mouse up up 
about level with where the brown soil starts. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and alt tab onto another window that is on the same monitor as the game. And now the game will just auto feed the fish. You can go completely AFK. You don't have to do anything whatsoever and it'll go ahead and grow your fish for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and let these fish grow, and then when a bunch of them have grown into an adult, I'll be back. Alright, so now that quite a few of my fish have grown into adulthood, I'm gonna drop tip 4 on ya. What I would do from here is I'm gonna go ahead and sell most of the adult fish. Now you do have the option to go ahead and lock the fish if you don't want to sell them. But at the very beginning, they're not really making you enough income to justify keeping them. At best, my current best income fish is only making me 31 cents per day, but it sells for over $5. So if I go ahead and just sell all these fish, it's going to give me much more money over keeping them to buy more packs which will give me more fish and then it kind of turns into a snowball effect where I can literally just keep growing these fish into an adult and just keep selling them and buying more packs. At the very beginning of the game it's going to be kind of slow. The first two tiers of fish aren't the best for passive income so basically I kind of recommend selling them instead of keeping them you can kind of focus on going back later on when you have actual income coming into the game to go in and start hunting for these fish that way you can kind of fill in the what i like to call the fish pokedex which we will go over next but before we go over that i do want to mention that there are special fish called golden fish and rainbow fish Golden fish have a spawn rate of 1 in 1024 with a hard pity of 2048. What this means is it is a 1 in 1024 chance to pull a golden fish, but after you have pulled 2048 fish, without pulling a golden fish, the game will guarantee you one and give you one. So what this means is every pack you buy gives you four fish. Each one of those fish counts as one pity. So basically, once you pull 2,048 fish out of these packs, if you have not gotten a golden by then because you are super unlucky, hopefully it doesn't take you that long, it'll just give you a golden fish for free, which is really cool. Rainbow fish work the same, except instead of 1 in 1,024, they are 1 in 8,192 with a hard pity of 16,384. I'm not really going to go over those too much because those are more of things you would hunt in the end game, and you don't really want to focus on those too much right now. But if you are lucky enough to pull one right now, I would go ahead and lock it. You'll save yourself a lot of trouble in the future, and that way it's just there. They look really cool, and it's just really nice to keep them. So tip number five, as I mentioned a little bit ago, there's something in this game I like to call the fish pokedex. It's this button up here in the top right, just the fish icon. It looks like this. Basically, it's kind of a log that tells you all the fish you've unlocked, all the fish you've unlocked but you haven't grown to adult, and then fish you haven't discovered at all. In the very beginning, I would try to avoid filling this out because the goal is to sell, sell, sell to try to make as much money as possible. When you get into the later game, the later stages of the game, you can start filling this out. But at the very start, I wouldn't really focus on this too much. Once again, it is completely up to you if you want to fill this in as you go. That is perfectly fine. As I said before, in tip number one, there is no correct way to play this game. Play it to your heart's content however you feel like. So from here, I'm going to start selling my fish. We're going to go into our aquarium here. We're going to change our age filter over to adult. We're just going to sell all unlocked fish. That gave us $37. We're just going to go buy more packs. We're going to spam open them. Look at that, I got a gold, and that's excellent. So I would probably go ahead and lock this in. That way I have it locked in and I don't sell it by accident when I go to grow my next batch of fish. 
So I can organize it by color, and I can go ahead and lock that. That leads me into my next tip. If you want to see things by a specific value, such as their rarity, it'll organize it from legendary to common, or if you click it again, it'll go from common to legendary. Color will basically organize it by rainbow being at the top, then golden, then painted, then just your normal everyday common rare epic legendaries. Value will organize it by how much the fish sells for, and income will organize it by how much the fish makes. I don't have any adult fish right now, so I don't have any income to organize by. So I'm going to go ahead and get myself up to $1,000, and that will lead us into our next tip, tip number seven. Alrighty, I went ahead and sold all my fish, and I got myself up to $1,000, and that leads me into tip number seven. Once you hit $1,000, the goal is to buy the next tier of fish immediately. So you come into your shop here, and you see that the rivers and pond pack cost $1,000. I want to buy this immediately because when I pull these fish and I grow them to adult, two to three of them usually covers the cost of that $1,000 that I just spent. And once I grow these fish to adult, I'm going to sell them basically immediately and I'm just going to keep buying more rivers and ponds packs as long as I need to in order to propel myself up to the reef fellas. Now, the reef fellas are not freshwater fish. Currently, we've been only working with freshwater fish. So what we're going to need to do is get a saltwater tank. So what that's going to do is lead me into my next tip, tip number eight. And that is the upgrades tab. When we come over here, we see that there are six different tanks. Now in here, what I would avoid is I would not buy the freshwater tank two or three. You don't need them yet since we're only using one tank at a time to breed our fish or rather grow them into an adult. You can't grow multiple tanks at a time. Currently, there's no method to put auto feeders or anything in any of these. Our goal basically is to try to get up to this first saltwater tank with $300,000 from the money that we make from selling our rivers and ponds fish. So basically I would try to focus this and avoid these. The only thing that I would recommend with the freshwater tanks is once you get to a point where you're hitting 60 fish in your tank or close to that 60 cap, I would go ahead and upgrade this. It's definitely a lot cheaper than the 10,000 for the second tank and the more fish you have in your tank, the more money you're going to make because the more fish will be growing at the same time and that way you can sell more fish which makes you more money obviously. Tip number nine is avoiding decorations. Don't buy these as cool as they look. They do cost quite a bit and when you're first starting your money goes down super fast and you don't really gain enough of it to supplement decorations quite yet. As you can see, from just passive income, I'm only making one cent every maybe three or four seconds, and that's not going to supplement me. All the fish I just bought, if I grow them all to an adult and I sell them all, it's only going to give me maybe $1,500 back if I'm lucky, maybe 2000 and I kind of need that to buy more packs, because that's two rivers and pond packs at the most right now. And these decorations basically cost $5,000 for a ship, $250,000 for a bonsai tree. And in the very beginning, that's just money I can be using to buy more fish to grow to make more money. So basically in the very beginning, avoid the pebbles, avoid the lights, and avoid the decorations. Use the money to buy more fish and grow more fish. It'll help you a lot and it will save you a lot of struggle for getting hard stuck on making progress. And for my final tip, keep your tank as full as you can at all times. As I said before, the more fish you have in your tank, the more fish you're growing into adult, the more fish you can sell after you make them an adult, the more money you're making. Keep your fish tanks as full as possible, at least your first one, the one that you're growing your fish in, and the money will come eventually. Personally, for me to go from freshwater friends all the way up to giants, it took me about five or six days from the game's release. Once you get to the reef fellas and marine dwellers though, 
the money really starts coming in and that's basically why we want to get to the saltwater fish as quickly as possible because we want to get to a point where we're getting enough income from growing fish as well as their passive income to where it doesn't really become a problem so we can just spam by packs we can basically try to buy 25 at a time if we're utilizing an empty tank to hunt for the fish to fill out this pokedex or maybe you're hunting for your golden pokedex finally trying to get that filled in that's what i'm currently working on and it gets quite expensive you're gonna want all the money you can when you get to points like this in the game Anyways guys, those are some tips, tricks, and recommendations that I kind of wish that I knew when I started the game and some knowledge that I can kind of bestow upon you that hopefully makes your early game go a little bit quicker, it streamlines it a little bit more, and it makes it a little bit easier for you to kind of get things done that you want in this game. This game is kind of an underdog in the sense that there's actually a lot more to it than it seems. At a glance, it seems like it's just kind of an idle screensaver that you can have on a second monitor to watch some fish growing. But there's a lot more to it with like the feeding system and the fact that there's a Pokedex in it that you can fill and there's just a lot of actual content. I think it's a really good game. I'm very happy I picked it up and got into it. I figured I'd go ahead and leave some tips and tricks and suggestions for what I would do when I'm first starting out now that I know what I know because I do see a lot of questions in the discord for this game asking things like how did you guys make so much money how did you guys progress so quickly etc etc so hopefully these tips and tricks and suggestions help you guys out I will see you next time hopefully when more Chilquarium content releases that I can make a video on peace